Hello and welcome back. It's time for another PS5 expansion test. Now, today we are looking at the Seagate Firecuda 530. It's been one of the big guns and definitely one of the SSDs that many platforms, my own included, have talked about being the best SSD for the job here. There's a few others, thanks to that uh, Fizon E18 controller on this SSD, and I've talked about it here on the channel for quite a few months. But now we've got one here, we're gonna get this system booted, and one, we're gonna see what performance the PlayStation's gonna measure this SSD at, and we're gonna move some games over, and then we're gonna boot some games. And throughout the course of this, I am both gonna to talk to you, the viewer, and of course, compare these results against benchmarks we've already recorded in advance for when we were using the internal console storage, and hopefully see how much better or worse this particular internal M2 PCIe Gen 4 SSD runs against the system storage. So we can see right now, I have booted the system. We can see it here, apologize for the sound quality. I'm still recording these from home. And as we can see here, it has recognized the SSD. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is format that SSD. It's gonna be a quick format. We are using the 500 gig model fire cuda 530 as we can see straight away there it has registered 6558 megabytes per second sequential read this ssd has a reported 7000 or so megabytes per second sequential read so again much like all the testing i've done previously with the samsung's the wds the sabrent uh, the auroras and more this seems to be kind of the top end figure we're looking at i think the most i've ever seen is around 66 or 68 from the internal core system them. So let's go ahead and proceed with the installation and what we're going to do is make our way into the user interface of our PlayStation and then we're going to double check that it is uh, actually listing it as available console storage. So let's log straight into the system as you can see there we are using the beta there on screen and we'll make our way into the storage manager. So from here we're going to go in and boom, there's our console storage, and there is our Seagate Fire Cuda, the Fire Cuda 530, registered right there. Lovely to see. So, again, from here, we've got that. The first thing we're going to do is move some games over. Now, in my previous testing, I should really have added a disclaimer. I've updated it in the description of some of my other videos, but I'm running a kind of World Cup system here with regards to the games. Now, these preliminary tests, I'm using mid-range PlayStation games. I'm not going to include Destiny anymore because I'm not really enjoying the fact that it has to communicate with the server. And we are testing five games in total. These are Destruction All-Stars, Control, Maneater, Wreckfest, and Plague Tale Innocence. All of these are PS5 games. They are currently all on the system storage, not the SSD. Look at the bottom right of the screen there. So what we're gonna do, first thing, is to move all of these games over to the SSD. Uh, and then I'll talk through some of the other elements of these tests moving forward. Um, let's go for move games and apps. Now I know a number of you are probably shouting at the screen right now. Why aren't you doing the bigger games? Why aren't you doing Rift Apart, Demon Souls, Spider-Man? Let's move those games over there. 131 gigabytes of data being moved. And here we go, moving them along. Now the reason I'm not touching on the big, big, big heavy hitter games that arguably do take advantage of the SSD's primary storage the most is largely because I'm going to be running a second barrage of tests with all of these SSDs uh, in follow-up videos next week where we're going to be looking at just those games. And in order to fit as many games as possible into these videos and therefore keep them as tight and as free-flowing as possible, I've gone for games like these. However, as I say, in the next barrage, we will be comparing directly uh, three or four SSDs per video where we'll be looking at the likes of the Samsung, uh, sorry, the Seagate Fire Cuda 530 versus the Samsung 980 Pro versus the SN850, all on the same videos. And with those, we're going to look at the big, big, big games because that's the ones where I think those are the top tier SSDs where we look at the top tier games. But these videos are about trying to fit in as many individual games as possible and still get these out to you as much as I can. So it's really a balance point. But one thing that worth mentioning, if you're looking at this video right now while it's moving this data from the console storage and onto the SSD, one thing I will touch on is that while transferring these games, there's definitely some sort of compression bottleneck. You can hear my cat there in the background. Um, that, that They definitely use some form of 
um, compression or encryption or block data control between the console and the SD storage. So even when I was utilizing high-end, um, the 4TB Sabrent, which can knock out about 7,100 megs of sequential read, and even the writing is at 6,800, the system, for some reason, needs to do some handling in the middle, you know, potentially compression or security. Um, but that data is, something's happening in the middle. So it's we're not able to, you know, ascertain direct write performance from moving games, as you can see here on screen. So which is a real shame because it would have been really nice to see the effects of improved sequential write uh, by the PlayStation 5. And again, it's something we may have to look at at a later date, but it makes it incredibly difficult to measure write speeds on the PS5. So all we can do really is concentrate on the read, utilizing these five games in today's video. So the moving's nearly finished. Uh, and once that's done, we're just gonna double check that all of those games have been moved onto the storage area. And then we're gonna start going through all of our games to test one by one. So there we are, we're all there. All the games have been moved over, as you can see, onto the movable storage. And if we come out and go into the storage manager, go back in, that drive that had zero on it has now got uh, all of that data moved over for us there. So I think from here, we can start running our test. So the first test, we're gonna go with Destruction All-Stars. This is a game that we don't run from the cold boot sequence with a timer. As you're about to see here on screen, it is absolutely riddled in publisher logos. And I get that, it's fine, but they would kind of ruin the pacing of what we're trying to do here while comparing all of these games. So what we're trying to do is compare them directly from the same point. So just like my other videos, I'm gonna click my fingers and then get ready for the transfer between them. So look, we're gonna get them both on screen in a moment. Three, two, one. So there we go, we are loading into the game. We've done our rapid tapping of X there while we've been waiting for the game to load us in. And again, this is a game that hides a lot of its loading quite well. I mean, right now we are looking at assets being built in the arena while the game is still giving us a little bit of slowdown here to hide stuff in the background. But I think right now we're almost into the game. And there we are, we're in. And hopefully on screen we've got a good understanding of just the difference there between them. So again, I think for now, that's a reasonable enough test. We'll go into that thing in the middle. That will go absolutely nuts. But yes, I think for now, we've got the measurement there for Destruction All-Stars. And I think from here, we can make our way onto the next game. So let's do that. Let's move into game number two. Just to make sure you guys can see everything, I'm going to, rather than interrupt things like I've done previously, this time what we're going to do is just free flow it as we go. Now, here's Control. This is a game that we are going to boot directly from the user interface here. We're not going to go into the title screen. This is going to be about how this compares with the internal SSD loading this game straight off the boot. So let's go for it. Three, two, one. Okay, we're loading up the game here. Again, this is a lovely, tight, easy loading game here. Originally on the PS4, but it has been upscaled to PS5. And hopefully we can have some information there about how quick this game's going to load. It's by far one of the quickest we've seen um, in our other testing with other SSDs. We've already made it here onto the title screen. And again, I'm trying to use the same areas of game and the same parts and the same save games to keep things even between stuff. But I think for now... This is not too shabby here. I think that's more than enough for us to be going along with. And I think this loading here, very respectable. Didn't feel any slowdown really there. So let's come out and load the next game. Our next game is Maneater. And Maneater is another game that we don't measure from the title screen, um, from the boot sequence. Again, because this game has loads of publisher logos that we don't want to factor in to the load times there. So we're gonna let that do its thing. And we're going to wait until we can get to the title screen before we compare these games and how they run uh, on the internal SSD and our Fire Cuda 530. So let's carry on. Got that going through there. Almost on the title screen. Screen. It's taking its sweet time. As soon as we get to that title screen, we can start measuring these games side by side. This is another game originally on the PS4, upscaled to PS5. 
Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and measure it. So three, two, one. Let's go in there. Making our way in again. Got to feel sorry for this guy on the right. We've been looking at this guy basically getting smashed to pieces a dozen times. As we can see now, because of the game earlier on, because we've been playing it, we are now in the game. So we're in a slightly different section, it has to be said. But I think the principle is still pretty sound there. And we've got that there on screen. The game has loaded quite well. It has to be said, we're all in and we're ready to go. But I think for now, that's been quite a good test from my point of view. Well, let's continue on to the next game. See, again, as mentioned before, I have dropped Destiny because a number of you... Uh, we're keen to point out that it does communicate with servers uh, during the boot-up sequence, which did cause slight delays between user usage environments. So it makes it unsuitable, really. And although I am going to touch on the big, big, big games, as mentioned in the comparison videos next week, I did think it worth dropping this just for the contention. So we've just replaced it with Plague's Tale and Wreckfest. So again, Wreckfest is a game we're going to be measuring from the title screen. So again, we're going to wait until this game gets... None of this can be skipped. We're going to get to that title screen. And then from there, we're just going to rapidly tap the X button to get into the game as fast as we can. And then we're going to see just how the Fire Cuda 530 compares against the internal SSD. So let's go ahead and start now. 3, 2, 1. And what I noticed previously is this game does this weird loading. It gets to 50%. And then it stalls a little bit. Like the counter, it can't account for what it's trying to do internally. So there'll be this big pause and then we're in the game again. So hopefully that will load now and we're in the game. So not too shabby at all. And I'll be honest, when I first saw this game, I couldn't get over how absolutely ridiculous this part of the game is, to be honest. Um, I didn't know this was a thing, to be honest. I mean, if you come from somewhere where this sport and i'm using the word incredibly loosely is actually a thing uh do let me know but the fact that this exists made me smile i think everyone is probably watching this wondering how have i not hit anyone yet but yes let's move on to our final game now our final game of course being plague's tale innocence we're at the start of the game here we've gone past the intro segment and from now let's go ahead and start a plague tale innocence now this is a game that we're going to start um after uh, load in the safe spot because uh, the way the safe spot load system works in this there's a little bit of DLC checking I noticed during the build up to this game so I thought if I include that that's another area with internet connectivity which might cause even small lags even a second or two it's not going to be very fair so for now what we're going to do is we're going to get to the point when we can resume from the main title screen so we're going to go here, it's then going to ask us to use our slot, and from here is where we're going to compare these two games loading. So let's, for our final game, let's go ahead, one, two, three. And we're moving into the game now. Got to say, the visuals in this title are just incredible. I mean, again, this is a game I've been meaning to touch on to when it was included in PS Plus, and I'm so impressed by the quality of it. But yes, we're in the game now going to run around this side path rather than go through the mud in the middle but again incredible world creation here in between we can examine quite a lot of stuff there around and again lots to play with there for the game but that has been our last game and i'll be honest i've not felt any difference i know you guys at home are watching this when you've got the uh, obviously the side by side comparison i don't have the side by side i can only go by memory but I can tell you right now, this feels absolutely fine. And in a couple of cases, I wouldn't be surprised if things are a touch quicker on this. I noticed that with the Sabrent as well, whether that was just because of the pushing of the sequential um, on the NAND, utilising 176 land NAND or 96 land NAND. But nonetheless, I'm going to end things here on this game. So let's come out of the game. This has been my performance and loading test of uh five games utilizing the playstation 5 expansion slot and the seagate fire cuda 520 um, again i'll be doing more exhaustive testing on this particular ssd next week while we do comparisons and it will be utilizing a lot more aggressive games i'm just going to move these back to the storage and as you'll see 
even with the sequential read activity. So this is where the system is reading from that M2 SSD to move things back to the console. We're not seeing a vast improvement there in performance overall, but do stay tuned for the comparison videos next week where we do a lot more aggressive stuff with these SSDs throughout. We've still got um, a few other SSDs to work through on my list. I've got here around, I'm absolutely swimming in them. So I'm gonna go through those for you guys, but otherwise click like if you've enjoyed the video, subscribe to stay tuned to the rest of those videos. And of course, there are links in the description over to both NAS Compares with the free advice section and data storage advice for NAS, Data Thunderbolt and more. But I'm also doing uh, Pictor and GIF based uh, comparison loading times in their own individual articles down there, which should be published in the next few days one by one. So do check those out and it's hopefully linked in the description, but otherwise I'll see you on the next video.